in this worked example, we'll revisit the example from the lecture. There we looked at what happened at the forces on a block on a slanted surface. Here we're going to take it one step further and ask under what angle can I slant a table or tilt a table such that a book that lies on it just does not slide off. So what we want to know is how far can you tilt the table before the book starts to slide. First step with a problem like this is to make a sketch of the situation. So we have a table. I don't really care much about the table, so I'm going to draw it as a straight line um, with maybe some arc, arc, little small lines to show that this is a table. And I have a book that's lying on it. And since I have nice colors here, I'm going to use one and draw the book like that. All right, so that's my sketch. Second step is to put in the forces that are acting in this system. We're interested in what happens to the book, so I'm going to draw the forces on the book. Now, which forces are there? Of course, there's gravity, which is always pointing down. There's going to be a normal force from the table on the book, because the book is not falling through the table. And there's going to be a friction force, and since the, force, the, the book tends to slide downwards, the friction force between the book and the table is going to be pointing upwards. And we know there's a friction force because there is a normal force between the book and the table, and because the book and the table want to move with respect to each other. It's so there is now a friction force acting upwards. And we're going to tilt the table, so I should define the angle that the table makes with the horizontal. And I'm going to give this, this angle a name. I'm going to I'll call it theta. All right, so now the question is, for which value of theta will the book just start to slide down? So when it just starts to slide down, it means that, well, that's the same angle as the, the point at which the forces are just still in equilibrium. We've seen in the lecture that the friction force is a bit of a weird force. But remember, the friction force would go up to a certain maximum value, right? go up to a certain maximum value, right? and then go down a little bit and then be static. Right? So, so the friction force in this linear regime, it would be less than or equal to a coefficient times the normal force. So, which makes sense, right? If, the, uh, if you're not pushing the book at all, then um, it's, there's not going to be a friction force, which is, for instance, is the case if the table is horizontal. However, if we start tilting the table, the book will want to slide and the friction force will increase. What will also happen is that the normal force will actually decrease. And the reason for that is that the component of the gravitational force that's perpendicular to the table will start to decrease. To see that, what we have to do is decompose some of these forces so that we can, can look at perpendicular components. But what we see here is that the friction force is parallel to the table, the normal force is perpendicular to the table, and the gravitational force has a component both perpendicular and parallel to the table. Of course, we could decompose all forces in x and y components, but it's easier to take a component along the table and perpendicular because two of our forces already are uniquely in those directions. So all we, the, the, in that case, we only have to decompose the gravitational force, which gives us a component that's perpendicular to the table and a component that's along the table. Now, how big are these components? Well, you've probably seen this before. The angle theta that the table makes with the horizontal, since the, the uh, gravitational force is perpendicular, is uh, vertical, right? the angle theta also occurs here. And then we know from basic trigonometry that this component is the, ma the magnitude of this component is the magnitude of the gravitational force times the cosine of theta, and this component along the table goes with the sine of theta. If you don't see the angle, there's also a simple trick. Imagine in your head that we turn the table back to horizontal. In that case, the 
component of the gravitational force along the table disappears and the sine of theta is zero, whereas the co component perpendicular to the table is equal to um, just the uh, gravitational force itself and indeed the cosine of theta is one. All right, so now we have two, co two forces that are perpendicular to the table, namely the normal force, which is always perpendicular, and the component uh, Fz cos theta. And if the book is not moving in that direction, these forces better be equal. So we have that Fz times the cosine of theta equals the normal force. We also have two forces along the horizontal direction. One pointing downwards, one pointing upwards. And if the book is not moving, these two also better be equal to each other. And so we have that the Fz times the sine of theta equals the friction force. So this is perpendicular to table and the parallel to the table, but under the condition that the book or the block or whatever, if the book is not moving. So at which, which point will the book start moving? Well, that of course is when the frictional force has reached its maximum, which by the, thing, the theory we've just discussed is when the frictional force equals the um, coefficient, the, the mu k or mu um, s, right, depending on whether you're still in the static regime or in the kinetic regime, times the normal force. Right? So if the book is just about to start moving, right, so this is, this is not always true, but when it, when it is about, but this is then mu f n. If and of course, if the so the I made a little mistake. I see this, of course, is the static one right in here. So uh, since we're turning the table slightly until the point that the book is starting to move, this is to be the coefficient of static friction. All right, so now we can start combining these two equations and say, well, um, we also we, we have here an equation between the gravitational force and the normal force in the second line, but also in the first line. So I can uh, use the uh, perpendicular, so the perpendicular to the table rule, this one, the first one, to find the normal force and substitute it back into the second one. So if I do that, I get that gravitational force times the sine of theta equals mu s times the normal force, which is Fz times the cosine of theta. And we see that it doesn't actually matter what the magnitude of the gravitational force is here because it will just drop out. So, um, Need not the, the mass of the book doesn't matter, and actually not even the gravitational acceleration matters. So if we would do this experiment on the moon, we would get the same answer. All right, so we can slash those things out. And what we find is that the angle is that angle for which the coefficient of um, static friction is the sine of the angle divided by the cosine of the angle, which of course is the tangent of the angle. Usually, uh, I would leave this as my answer. Of course, you could invert this and say that the angle theta max is the arc tangent of this coefficient of static friction. Now, of course, you could look up the coefficient of static friction of a given book of a given material and a table of a given material and actually put in numbers and find what this actual angle is. Inversely, you can of course now uh, determine what, this, uh, what the coefficient is by measuring the angle at which the book will start to slide. So what we, did we do in this example? Well, but before, we, before we conclude, it makes sense to, to check our answers. First thing to check is do, do we have the same kind of number on the left-hand side and the right-hand side of our equation? Right? We can't compare forces with masses because we can't compare apples with oranges. All right, so on the left-hand side, we have an angle, which is expressed in number of radians or degrees, which has no unit. And on the right-hand side, we have the arctan 
of a coefficient which also has no unit. So indeed, we have number equals a number. No meters, seconds, newtons or anything. The second thing is, well, if this coefficient would be higher, we would expect the angle to also be higher before, because the maximal fixable, fictional force that, um, that there could be before the, before the book starts to slide should be higher. And that indeed is the case. And if the coefficient goes to zero, then giving, making just a very small angle will already cause the book to slide, which indeed is also the case. So indeed, our answer makes rudimentary sense. So what did we do? First, we made a drawing. We put in all our knowledge for our, our, in, our, in this case, all our vectors of our forces. Then we decompose them in components perpendicular and parallel to the table. And from that, we wrote down these two equations, equations one and two over here. And then we combined those equations to get to our, our, um, our answer. And we check that our answer actually answers the question, right? We were asked for the angle and that our answer makes sense.